Devesh, coming back to you uh, as a leader of your organization, how are you ensuring, uh, you know, the projects go live? Uh, yeah, so I, I'll just give you two or three real life examples and again, different, different uh, industries. Uh, one of our, uh, in, in, in the case of one of our customers, uh, our engagement leads are sitting in their leadership meetings, okay? So they are part of their business planning, they are part of their strategy sessions. They are up there, rather than being told and being order takers, we are actually influencing the customer's agenda when they're doing the business planning. It's, this is my biggest customer, okay, in, in the business unit that I run in manufacturing. Our engagement directors and leads are right there at the beginning of the year, driving the agenda in what we can do to shape their business, which, which is not common, but that's the level of intent that we are showing. I'll give you another, another example where one of our customers, and I can't name them, uh, is undergoing a merger and acquisition right now. They're buying one of their leading competitors. One of the first phone calls they made was to us to tell us what can we do to come and sit at the table and start driving a standardization agenda on their technology, on their process, and what we can do so that the end state starts to look the same for the combined entity. Okay, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that was unheard of. You know, you would hear about it in the papers that they were going in m and Here we are, this customer coming and telling us that we want an m and checklist from you to tell us what we can do to port the order to cash processes, your accounts payable processes, so that they look as one standard global operating model in the combined entity, all right? I can give you a third example where a very high technology company is developing a product, starting to take it to, to emerging markets and saying, you know what? I'm not there in those emerging markets. I'm not in Brazil, I'm not in Russia, I'm not in India even. Can you, using your shared service model, to develop a virtual company for us where you can service us in these markets. So we focus only on developing the market and getting quick returns. You handle my back office and look at all the fixed costs that are associated with entering these emerging markets. So three different examples uh, describing different uh, stages of the product life cycle, but all about the same point that I made earlier, speed, agility, and go to market quickly. Great examples there, uh, Devesh. So uh, moving on, uh, uh, Sridhar. Uh, Implementing a multi-channel service delivery is one thing and managing it is another. Uh, as in one of the earlier presentations, the gentleman pointed out how, you know, TVs and TVs of data is being generated with a billion devices being connected uh, in the times to come. So what do you feel are the challenges or, you know, the areas of focus that uh, a business technology leader has to look at post the deployment of uh, such a strategy? Yeah. Uh, Good question. Uh, the reason I say it is a good question is there is a last mile challenge, which uh, we all know that um, is getting better and better, but that's something that customers have been challenging us uh, in terms of uh, delivering the last mile solution. We have looked at it various forms, and uh, it's not a problem that we can wish away very quickly, right? So as the last mile gets better, as you know that there are a lot of rollouts happening, the infrastructure is growing, uh, in terms of uh, you know the investment it's picking up and so on and uh, telecom service providers also looking at it a lot more seriously that is a definite uh, challenge that is there and uh, we believe that uh, as we start addressing that the real benefit will start coming uh, the second thing that I would say is uh, in terms of you know not only are you talking about connectivity here you're also talking about what are you going to do with the data and how are you going to put it on black on the cloud as well Right? Uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, the next question would be uh, asked is, how are you gearing up for the big storage uh, and the big uh, serve, uh, uh, to, to serve your customers, the, the server platform that are there? Uh, we, heard, we saw the HP gentlemen also talk about uh, their strategy as well. So what are we doing from, from that point of view, right? Last mile, uh, while the, on the trunk side, we know that the connectivity and we are able to address it significantly. Uh, we are gearing up more and more from the data center uh, perspective to help customers look at their entire infrastructure, be it IT or uh, be it telecom together. So that's a big challenge. So when, you, when we are talking about the cloud 2.0, that's our strategy going forward, we are seeing transformation at all these levels, right? From uh, the last mile, uh, from the connectivity uh, in its entirety, the data center, uh, and manageability of all the devices that is there. Uh, so customers are asking us, uh, you know, this thing called single pane of glass or a software-defined networking, right? Those are things that people are talking about more and more where uh, uh, you add an element on the network um, without, you know, looking at the physical device, right? Uh, you have a software provision for that. Uh, and you add users, you add elements on the networks, you manage it 
completely, seamlessly, globally. Those are things uh, that we need to gear ourselves up going forward. And those are things that, you know, even from our Cloud Do Auto strategy, we are looking at uh, uh, deploying and also implementing it for our customers. Sure. Ma'am. So, uh, the way I would like to put it is I see it have the challenge coming in from both the ends. It is both at the our customer's end and the challenges that we need to uh, address at an internal end. And when I say challenges at the customer end with multi-channel coming in, the customer will expect a seamless delivery from all of us. So be it cloud, be it different mechanisms of delivery to the customer, the experience whether they walk into a branch, whether they come in through the web or they talk to somebody at the call center, has to be very, very same. Can, can they get different experiences? The multi-channel delivery mechanism is going to fail if that is going to happen. So it, it takes me back to the point of definition and defining and thinking and strategizing on you know, what the customer is expecting. So if we do that well, we know what, what uh, is the expectation we experience the customer demands. But not to forget, uh, the internal aspect of it is extremely important as well. So with the multiple touch points coming in, what will happen is now you have access to data which you could have never thought about. Now zillions of uh, this data bytes that's sitting with you, what are you going to make out of it? Will your CMO tomorrow demand that my strategies for the organization is going to be based on what is it that you are collecting from our customers? So your ability to scale not just store the data, so of course storage of data, how do you access that data, how do you apply analytics on that data is one part of it, but uh, you know, leverage that data to drive the business that your internal stakeholders are not now going to demand of you. That's one aspect and the second aspect that we are today looking at very, very consciously as we work with some very large customers is how will you drive the change? So the, here, change management will play an extremely key role. Organizations have all been created as silos, as departments, as uh, you know, very, very large conglomerates which are now working in a very defined pattern. When information is now going to flow in seamlessly, do you as an organization have the ability to handle it? So if you look at it, you know, these would be the top three that come to my mind that the challenges that we will have to look for and address them much way before you know, we progress any. Sure. So Devesh, what are your thoughts on it? Are you also looking at uh, big data analytics, you know, change management and stuff like that? Yeah, they are, they, these are all the big challenges which all customers are facing. But I think the biggest challenge we face uh, when we are going through any, any outsourcing engagement in whichever arena, IT or, uh, is the transparency and the visibility to the customer. And uh, that's the first uh, challenge that you surmount, which is how do you make sure that the client is, get, is having the same amount of control, perceived or otherwise, uh, as you take that uh, work into a different geography for delivery. So. Uh, what, and the way we have surmounted that is by setting up uh, reporting and command centers which give our customers uh, ultimate visibility and transparency in whatever aspect of, uh, of the engagement that, that we are executing for them. This becomes particularly complex if you're talking multi-geographic and multi-stack. So by multi-stack I mean you know, if you're touching different parts of their organization, whether it's CIO, CFO, the operations, and if it's a combined embedded end-to-end -end engagement, the visibility to end customer metrics is absolutely paramount because if it becomes out of sight for them, that's what causes the most amount of pain. So that, to me, is one of, one of the biggest challenges that we are facing because in these end-to-end -end engagements that we are starting to execute, the, the risk is high, okay? The returns are good, but the risk is high. And so therefore, we have to be, be, be very, very uh, conscious of the fact that customers are getting that visibility and transparency that they're still in control of whatever they outsource to us, even if it's on an end-to-end -end basis. Coming to change management, the challenges are different, and all of you are very erudite people in the room. I don't, I don't have to preach to the choir. The challenges in America are different from the ones in Europe. Europe is a bunch of 20 different countries. America is still unified, at least the northern part of America, so still has one big geography. So the cultural challenges are different. The change management challenges associated with the unions, uh, associated with the processes, banking processes, is very, very different when you come to different geographies. So, and I think that uh, those have to be handled very carefully and very differently. What works in the US won't work in Europe, as you know, or vice versa. Sure. 
So final question before we wrap up the session. Uh, Sridhar, what are some of the best practices that organizations should look at while going for such a strategy? Go cloud. <laughs> All right. Um, I think um, this question, obviously, my co-panelists will uh, perhaps answer better. But I can tell you from a service uh, provider point of view, uh, in terms of the best practices, uh, this is something of a journey that we need to participate uh, together as well. As a cloud, I mean, when we say cloud adoption, it's not that it's so simple because people have legacy to uh, contend with. There are set ways of working. There is, uh, there is a skill gap, right? Uh, when when people move uh, in terms of a new way of working, uh, there is a scalability gap that needs to be addressed. There is a migration gap, for example, right? Uh, there will be time when uh, you'll want to run your core process one way and uh, try out the other processes in a different way, and then. Uh, make the full scale uh, kind of a jump in there. So I would say that, you know, before uh, we move on to the cloud platform uh, in there, probably uh, there will be stages in which we'll have to do that, which we'll uh, co-create along with the customers. That's the best practice to my mind, that co-creating this, it's, it's not going to be a one size fits all, because from where they are starting from and where they're going to end uh, are going to be different journeys. Right, and uh, uh, we, we are also learning. Uh, uh, I would say on this path that is there, while we have created the infrastructure, but participation in terms of the migration thing is an evolving thing right now. Right, uh, I would also think that there is no best practice uh, that is available that we can immediately. We, we can probably learn from the IT implementation that have happened in the past for the cloud uh, implementation that have happened. Right, and mind you that while uh, the movement to the cloud has begun in a big way. But have everything moved to the cloud? Not yet. And uh, th there are some organizations that have actually announced that they have moved uh, to there. Uh, there are very, very few of them. Right? So we need to learn and we need to cooperate. We are very conscious of the fact that you know, ours is a big partnership journey. We cannot be a supplier in here. We have to definitely, and that's the reason I was mentioning that you know, uh, we need to create workshops and we need to actually you know, uh, start mapping out the journey together. And that we see is the best practice, that we, we stay in the journey together, establish the milestones together, and you know, overcome the problems together as service providers. We cannot say that, OK, this is something that is there. Uh, the customer cannot come back and say, go and implement it this way. It has to be a uh, well thought out, co-created journey. Ma'am, what do you think? Do you think absolutely. past deployments can be used no, as absolutely templates? absolutely agree with him. I think there are no best practices, defined practices available today. I think co-creation. Uh, working together, evolving, learning, and then going out is what our customers are also expecting of us. They, they know that there is no proven models here. I think it is changing. Uh, again, another paradigm change that will happen is this has not happened before. So there will be no best practices available from past experience. So how do we do it? Uh, I, I know of a couple of our customers who are building in co-innovation funds jointly with us to go explore it out in the market. They also do not know what, they know what the business outcomes they want to drive, but what they don't know is how to reach there. So we will collectively together go into, in that journey. One important aspect that I learned as we were talking to most of these customers, uh, and we can call it a best practice, is that do not wait for too long before uh, going back to them. Show and tell is what our customers are asking us. So they are, as, as we are progressing in this journey, one thought that is coming back again and again to us is that as we are thinking through this journey, show and tell. Tell us what is it that you're thinking. Let us do a proof of concept. Let us try this out. It may not work. Tell us what the thinking is going behind. So I think uh, this is something that we have heard from many customers, be it banking, insurance, whether it is retail. So I would absolutely agree with you on co-creation along with your customers and Show and tell, as I call it, is an important aspect of that co-creation, is how I would like to put it. So, Devesh, do you also share the same sentiment? I'll make it quick. I'm really conscious I'm holding you up from your lunch. But uh, uh, I would say innovation. For us, our customers are demanding innovation uh, uh, you know, from their customer perspective. And uh, we have, for us, that, that is what keeps us going. So it's important that we keep continuing to bring new offers uh, to our customers so that uh, they stay relevant. Uh, in front of their customers. That's one thing. The second point, which again has worked well for us, uh, is that we hold ourselves accountable to our customers' outcomes. So we are, if, you, if you're signing up to make sure that you're signing up to your customers' outcomes, and I mentioned to you with a revenue, profit, uh, whatever it be, EPS, working capital, 
those are the things that to me are going to set apart uh, uh, the providers of the future because then you're actually signing up to your customer's agenda uh, and signing up to what they are accountable for in front of the stakeholders. So innovation and customer outcomes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So with this, we wrap up the session.